the wheels just go. It brings them out. Okay, we're here today at Pizza Mills. There's Caitlin and Janelle. Hi. Yeah. And me, and we're here at the museum. We've just seen the uh, museum movie, talking about the mounds. So you can have your picture taken as a junior ranger. Yep. We did spot where we can press a button and see down. I, th I think a light comes on down there. Uh -huh. Silver, silver tree, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think this is new. They got the yeah, pictures. The yeah. You're getting credit for that. I see. The dugout canoe. Oh, they covered it up. They did? Yeah, there's nothing that you can see down here now. Yeah, all the same thing. Like I said, it looks like they changed up to the pool and that Uh-huh. Here were two cats. Mastodons. Wooden period is part of Winston, I mean, Prince and Mounds. Prince and Mounds. Prince and Mounds. This is when the Spanish came into the Americas. And it was trade for steel and metals and beads and stuff.
Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. The laboratory area into the mouse. No, I think there is a button. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, on the other side. Okay. Okay, huh? see the red button right there? Go press that button right there. You are looking at a reconstruction of an archaeological investigation, or dig, which was completed here at Pinson in 1982. Through investigations such as this, archaeologists are able to find clues as to who built the mounds here and how they lived. It is as if each such investigation reveals pieces to a giant picture puzzle of Pinson mounds. And as the pieces of the pins and mounds puzzle began to form a clearer picture of what life was like, here, the green mm -hmm. puzzle of what life was like all across North America prior to European contact also begins to fit together more clearly. Yet there is much about the people who constructed this mound complex, which cannot be found by archaeological investigation. We cannot discover how the builders of the mounds sang, laughed, or danced. We do not even know what they call this special place. Such things cannot be found in the soil, but the people who built the mounds at Pinson did leave much here for us to contemplate. The first European explorers who found these magnificent earthworks knew that they had discovered a very special place. One of the earthworks not found by the early explorers of Pinson was a round earthen circle with a diameter of approximately 13 meters. Dr. Dan Morris, a local college professor, discovered this feature on a low bluff above the floodplain of the Fort Deer River in the early 1960s. He dubbed it the Duck's Nest. Okay. When the excavation of the duck's nest began, the archaeological workers laid out a grid system with surveying instruments. Stakes labeled with metric coordinates marked the corners of each square in the grid. Scientists carefully removed the soil, first by a shovel, and as the excavation progressed, by hand trowels and brushes. When the archaeologists found small items, they carefully unearthed them with more refined tools. In this way, the archaeologists slowly stripped away the soil in each square in thin levels, taking them on a measured trip back in time. The scientists found a large dark stain as they carefully exposed the lower layers of the duck's nest. It appeared to be the remains of a large hearth or fire pit that had apparently been used by the Indians. Cautiously, archaeological workers removed large pieces of charcoal from the bottom of the pit and carefully wrapped them in foil to avoid contamination. Later, scientists in the laboratory used this charcoal to date the feature through a process called radiocarbon dating. During the investigation, the archaeologists located artifacts, including small pieces of a clay pot just above the charcoal layer. Using dental picks and brushes, they carefully excavated these pottery sherds. Placing all artifacts in labeled paper bags after their removal, the archaeologists marked each bag with the site identification number, the date of removal, and the name of the excavator. Drawings documented the progressive exposure of the feature at appropriate intervals. Photos, including a placard showing relevant feature information and a ruler for scale, also helped carefully record the excavation. Later, in the laboratory located on the lower floor of this building, the archaeologists carefully analyzed the artifacts, photos, drawings, and excavation records. And what have we learned from the duck's nest? Was it a ceremonial fire used in sacred ceremony? Was it lit as a beacon fire helping those who travel to this important ceremonial center find their way along the river in the night? Certain evidence leads the archaeologists to believe that the fire in this hearth might have been a one-time occurrence, although that is not conclusive. As is often the case, the excavation of the duck's nest has raised more questions than it has answered. Perhaps the most important thing that has been learned is that the fire, which now shows up as the dark stain in the soil, burned here about 2,000 years ago. 
This solidly associates it with the other parts of the Pinson Mount complex. And what are the pottery found to be ashes? Could it have been the remains of a pot which held food prepared over an open hearth? Or the remains of a ceremonial vessel used in some moving, solemn ritual? Some pots at similar sites seem to have been purposefully broken or ritually killed as a part of religious ceremonies. Or was the pot unceremoniously discarded as trash in the fire, having been broken in daily use? We may never know, but we do know just a little more about the site, one more piece of the puzzle. Someday, an archaeologist of the future may come upon the record of the duck's nest excavation and find some minute and seemingly insignificant detail which may fit presumably disjointed pieces of the picture into perfect alignment. Until then, we have to settle for speculation. We can only imagine how the picture puzzle might look with all the pieces in place. It is places like pins and mounds that will yield the pieces. You're invited to explore pins and mounds on our trails. Remember that you're walking on ground that your sisters and brothers from times long past considered very special, perhaps even secret. Mm, right. The pottery. Yep, yep I've done that. You can see these decorations for the pot? Yep. With the wooden uh, paddle thing? Yep. All right. Those are things that are made from the deer. Oh, here's the meat. Look. Mm hmm. The meat. A butchering chart. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Right All right. Well, we'll go around to the uh, gift shop. And that'll be it for Pencil Mouse today. All right. Okay. We'll go over here to the gift shop in a few minutes. All right.